we all there are two words one is known as rag ragaha the other one is known as prema prema means love okay bhagavad gita wants us to love bhagavad gita doesn't want us to have selfish attachments raga it's all about love ultimate love it's a love song it teaches us to become true lovers so let us let us look at rag most of us in the name of love have nothing but an attachment and this attachment has certain qualities number 1 the attachments that we have to our loved ones they are they are manufactured with the thread of selfishness we are attached because we want something from that relationship yes or no if you look deep down it's a selfish birthing ground is attachment whereas in love there is selflessness we love not for what we shall get we just love period it goes into bhakti and devotion and selfishness number 2 breeds a wanting i want from that relationship this is ragaha i want this is the kind of love we have in the human beings i wo- i love you because you fulfill me because you fill me up these are all the songs out there you fill me you <laughs> what is this why why are you empty first of all why you somebody fill you first of all so it's not i always have this vedantic question that i have to switch it off and you know <laughs> like, okay so selfish then i want and then conditional If you don't fulfill me, it's over, baby. Isn't it like this? This is the love we are professing to each other. This all raga. And because of the root of selfishness, want, and conditionality, we are also naturally driven sooner or later to some adharma we will take some action we will do something some behavior that's going to be self gratifying and it will harm another or the planet because we are consumers of attachments we are attached let's look at prem love if it is love it will be selfless if it is love it will also want it's not that it will be some sacrificing martyr but it will also think of what giving what the other also wants what does the other person want it's not just my list of want my my need for strokes my need for esteem my need for love my need for comfort there are many relationships people come to me and say why should i stay in the relationship what were where were my needs met So after a long time, I have to ask: Did you meet any need? Oh, I. Oh, they were so obsessed with their needs. But in love, the person will think of giving, even before wanting. Give. And it won't be conditional. Yeah, Vidya, if you don't meet my need, I am not going. The person will continue loving. And so there will be dharma. Dharma shall be maintained. so wherever there is adharma such as in ragaha sooner or later there is sorrow because papam karma negative karma is created and sorrow comes back and there is punyam joy love the person becomes the person is selfless the person is giving more the person is not putting all these limits and conditions and the person is holding on to dharma and the person is looking younger than they are and joyful and the other person who had all these attachments and grandiose attachments is becoming bitter and happier and unhappier and getting smaller and smaller 
and we have to acknowledge that raga is an issue that we all have either towards objects or people and then what does raga does is it leads to another complication which is known as shokaha or frustration we get frustrated we get angry we get frustrated it brings in grief self pity victimhood and a lot of irritability worry frustration um, a feeling of lack of empowerment because we're not getting our attachments right shoka and after shoka the final stage happens which is mohaha in which we've kind of been doing adharmic things we are manipulating we 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 want we want our needs met we want that person in our life because it needs to fulfill us so we're doing all of this so by mohaha we our mind completely forgets what is the right path and it starts believing that adharma after all i can have an affair after all it's okay for me to cheat occasionally after all we start justifying you know justifying um heavenly bargaining because we, it's because we have the mind has gone into a delusional stage and dharma adharma get confused completely the and so at this stage the intellect has completely suppressed so when we have moha intellect or delusion mental delusion intellect has suppressed and the mind just feels justified in its victimhood in its anger in its bitterness in its unethical actions and then guess what happens it becomes a syndrome because when one is in delusion one has yet more attachments and then one has yet more more suffering more frustration around managing those attachments because attachments don't last those attachments are temporary living beings die or disappear or betray us because they themselves are suffering from raga shoka moha objects don't last so these temporary attachments we have all this happening so they it leads to yet more so gradually this is what i mean it becomes a very uncomfortable unhappy bowl of noodles that's the mind then raga shoka moha whirled up into each other and that is the typical mind so how interesting that krishna if it krishna and look at how unpretentious bhagavad gita is look at how real it is it could have completely staged krishna and arjuna in arjuna about to drink too much alcohol one too many a little bit social okay even healthy for you according to ayurveda but one too many alcohol is an alcoholic and krishna comes up in his beautiful manner and says oh my dear arjuna do not die drinking that alcohol because if you have raga to that alcohol check understand so you will have shokaha when you don't get enough alcohol and you have mohaha so you are thinking that you are justified to drink it and you're just harming yourself and you think that's also okay so you're all confused and here hell let me give you the sermon of bhagavad gita makes total sense instead we have a very very difficult situation where arjuna has to actually kill his own grandfather this is a very difficult situation that is a designer difficult situation he has to kill his own grandfather he has to kill his own teacher of archery not because they are specifically bad or evil but because they have in their own version of dharma uh, sided with evil and so therefore arjuna is taught about raga he's having raga to them so this is a little stark it's a bit oh but could we leave the teacher out of it could we just leave the grandfather out of it how wonderful if he just had to kill the cousins but this is where we get deluded between but after all i love this person haven't we heard of people who are sexually abused by their own 
family member and then they won't speak up about the family member. Why? Because I love that person. Doesn't that happen? Right? So don't we, don't, so ultimately the question is, Arjuna, are you colluding with evil or are you colluding with truth? Satyam, Dharma. So this is a very dire, direct teaching. Our life situations may not be such that we have to kill our grandfather or kill our archery teacher. But what it's really saying is that the stacks may be really high. And you may still may have to choose dharma. And you might want to have your intellect handy and not have a mental noodle blowout and not have raga. And then first he had Raga, oh, I am attached to them. I played on their lap, and oh, I need them around. Oh, a, fa and, uh, a society without ancestors is use useless society. All the men will die, then who will take care after the Pitras and the Yajnas? And he made all these arguments for his Ragaha. Then he had Shokaha, he was suffering, he was restless. And then he had Mohaha, and he said, no, no, I think this is very non-dharmic. And I think I should, the dharmic thing is to let the evil people rule. And, 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 and I think the dharmic thing is for me to renounce, <laughs> to go and live in the mountains. So that was all moha, because he, he completely had quit. And if he had quit, then we, entire India would be the descendants of those evil <laughs> um, prince. So with this, I begin with a bang, <laughs> the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. And I hope that all of you walk away embellished by these words written by Baba uh, in the foreword to the Adi Bhagavad Gita. This is in Hindi, so I'll translate to the best of my capacity in the moment. अंत में भगवान श्री कृष्ण जी महाराज से हमारी यही प्रार्थना है कि इस गीता के अध्ययन करने वाले लोग संग्रह से प्रेरित होकर दृश्य काम कर्म करें तथा सच्चाई हार्दिक भक्ति और ज्ञान की सर्वागी से इस प्रकार अपने जीवन में कार्यरत रहें कि प्रत्येक अवस्था में प्रत्येक स्थान पर समस्त प्राणी मात्र को अपना आप समझें और सब में उस सर्वव्यापी भगवान के विराट रूप का दर्शन करें जिससे अपने सीमित अहम भाव को ब्रह्म की असीमता में लाभ कर सके लीन कर सके यही तो मनुष्य जीवन का अंतिम लक्ष्य है सो बाबा सेइंग इन द फॉरवर्ड दैट इन द एंड इन कंक्लूजन दिस इज माय प्रेयर टू श्री कृष्ण दैट all the people who do the study, who do the learning of Gita, they get motivated to, uh, of, to do Nishkam, selfless Karma Yoga. And with great inner truth, and with deep reverence and bhakti, and with an alertness to Jnanam, to self-knowledge, May they start leading their daily life in such a way that in all lifestyles and in all life situations, they look at all beings in this world, all creatures, and they see the one common self, they see their own self in all beings. And they see that God, Brahman, Sarvavyapi, who is dwelling in everything and everything, May we see their Virata Rupa, may, see, may we see them with these humble human eyes. May we see that Brahma. Like Arjuna got the darshan of Krishna uh, in his Virat, in his full form as Brahman. Uh, he gave Arjuna that glimpse. May we all also get that glimpse of that ultimate reality, which is fullness and but in every, everywhere in every particle so that simit aham bhav so that this ahamkara this tiny little collapsed self okay it dissolves and becomes one with that seamless brahman after all this is the goal of 
human life. So these words of Baba, Bhagavad Gita. First class, and I invite all of you to continue three more classes with me over here. And um, feel free to invite your friends and family who you feel are ready for stretching their intellect and awakening it. Um, because to tell others about Bhagavad Gita is an act of punyam. Mm -hmm.